It is now time in our study of valence bond theory to look at the bonding in formaldehyde, a very simple organic molecule. Formaldehyde is, from the old nomenclature, form meant one carbon. So there's one carbon, two hydrogens, and an oxygen in formaldehyde. And so if you go to do the Lewis dot structure for this, which is a great starting point anytime you want to understand the bonding in a molecule. If you could draw a Lewis dot structure, you're off to a good start. So we need four electrons for the carbon, four valence electrons for the carbon, two times one for the hydrogen, and then six for the oxygen. Gives us 12 electrons for the formaldehyde. The carbon is in the center, and it's attached to the oxygen and the two hydrogens. We can fill the octet on the non-central oxygen. And at that point, we've used two, four, six electrons to connect everything up, six electrons to complete the octet on the oxygen. So we've used all 12 electrons at this stage. And we can't add in any electrons, but the carbon here is still only got six electrons in its environment, the three bonds. So in order for the carbon to fill the octet role, it's going to have the oxygen share a lone pair of electrons and make it a bonding pair. And this organic arrow pushing of moving this pair of electrons from being a lone pair of electrons to making it a bonding pair of electrons is going to be the heart of mechanisms in our understanding of organic reactions. So if we go ahead and do that, then we end up with the carbon double bonded to the oxygen. So a lot of times I like to use a little intelligent color to say, like, there's the motion of the electrons, and that's the new thing. So now we have a multiple bond between the carbon and the oxygen. Single bonds between the carbon and the hydrogen. We've used all 12 electrons, and every atom that can have an octet has an octet, two, four, six, eight electrons around this oxygen, two, four, six, eight electrons around that carbon. There's no formal charges, no resonance, nice simple dot structure. And you'll notice as I transform to the dot structure, I also transformed the geometry of this because with three electron domains, the electron domain geometry is trigonal planar so we take the Lewis structure and start applying the VSEPR ideas to it, and we can see that the approximate bond angles here are going to be 120 degrees based on this being a triangular arrangement. The oxygen might take up a little more space and expand some of the angles and contract other ones, but about 120 degrees for each bond angle, nice trigonal planar structure, and so that's the Lewis structure and via CPR description of the bonding. Important thing to lead us into valence bond theory description is when we have three electron domains around the carbon, the carbon is going to be sp2 hybridized. The carbon is going to be sp2 hybridized. And although a lot of people believe that terminal atoms do not hybridize, I'm going to count this oxygen having two lone pairs and one bonded atom as also being sp2 hybridized. And then we'll take a look at how those hybrid orbitals and the unhybridized hydrogen 1s orbital are going to overlap to form the bonds here. All right, so formaldehyde from a Lewis perspective leads us into the valence bond description. So we have a carbon in the center, and the carbon is sp2 hybridized, so that gives us this nice triangle of sp2 hybrid orbitals. And that's one of the reasons that this will hybridize, is so that it'll have the orbitals that are the right orientation to form the bonds that we need for the molecule. So the carbon uses the s and two of the p orbitals to form the three sp2 hybrids, which form a trigonal planar structure. 
And the hybrid orbitals, and this is a really important thing for me to understand, is hybrid orbitals will either form sigma bonds, single bonds, or they will accommodate lone pairs of electrons. So this carbon is set to form three bonds or to hold three lone pairs of electrons or any combination thereof. The oxygen I had mentioned we're also going to look at as being sp2 hybridized. And if I draw the sp2 orbital of the oxygen aimed at the sp2 orbital of the carbon, then we can see this nice sigma area of overlap and this orbital overlap forms a bond. So when we look at the Lewis dot structure and we see that carbon is bonded to the oxygen, we can see that this very first bond is the sigma bond between the sp2 orbitals. So that's why I might say we have a sigma bond between carbon and oxygen formed from the overlap of sp2 orbitals. And I might be, I might say sp2 hybrid orbitals, but all sp2 orbitals are hybrid, so that would be sort of redundant. But there's the first bond that we got in place. And this oxygen also has two sp2 hybrid orbitals, which are going to be involved in constructing the molecule. So the carbon bonds to the oxygen. The carbon also bonds to the two hydrogens. So each hydrogen just has a 1s orbital. And notice we can line up the hydrogen 1s orbital with the sp2 orbital on the carbon. And you'll see again this nice sigma overlap head-to-head -head interaction of two orbitals. The other hydrogen bonds to the carbon in the same way. Hydrogen's 1s orbital interacts with the sp2. So now we have two sigma bonds, carbon and hydrogen bonding, from the overlap of a carbon sp2 orbital with the hydrogen 1s orbital. So you can see that where the orbital overlap leads to bonds. And then the oxygen has these two lone pairs, and those will sit in the sp2 hybrid orbitals. So one of the things that I said was helpful for me to understand is that hybrid orbitals will either form sigma bonds right, or hold lone pairs of electrons. And that's essentially the point of valence bond theory and hybridization in some sense is that to get the right geometry of the molecule we need to have orbitals at the right geometry so that we can construct it. So the hybrid orbitals will form the first bond between any two atoms and then hold the lone pairs of electrons and that's where the electron domain geometry comes from and why there's such a strong link between which hybrid orbitals you use, what the hybridization of the central atom is, and what the geometry of the molecule is. So if this is going to be trigonal planar, it's going to need sp2 hybrid orbitals to make that triangle. So if you know the electron domain geometry from Lewis and VSEPR, then you know how to approach the valence bonding in the molecule. All right, so now we've got the single bond between carbon and hydrogen, the single bond between carbon and hydrogen, the single bond between carbon and oxygen, and the two lone pairs of electrons all accounted for. So what do we need to do now? The multiple bond, and that's where the sigma bonds come from the hybrid orbitals. P orbitals that are unhybridized, P orbitals that are unhybridized, can form the pi bonds, which are going to be the multiple bonds. So perpendicular to the plane of the triangle, 
you've got a p orbital on the carbon because we've used two of the p orbitals to form the hybrids we still have one left over and on the oxygen we also have an unhybridized p orbital and so these are generally driven drawn longer and skinnier than they should be so they don't look like they're interacting but when you get the carbon close to the oxygen then these parallel p orbitals form the pi bond so we have four bonds in the molecule a sigma bond between the carbon and oxygen from the sp2 orbitals two sigma bonds between carbons and hydrogens from the overlap of the carbon sp2 orbital with the hydrogen 1s orbital and now we have a pi bond between carbon and oxygen from the overlap of p orbitals on each. And so that's our picture of how formaldehyde is put together from the overlap of different orbitals to form the bonds and then the hybrids can hold the lone pairs. So this is an example where we have an sp2 carbon attached to an sp2 oxygen and what that framework looks like in my little sketch. If you're taking an organic class, you probably have a textbook that has amazing drawings. And what I would recommend is you look through different types of bonding that you'll see, single, double, and triple are different types of bonding, and see how those are formed from the hybrids. So the classic molecules to look at are C2H2, which is acetylene, or known as ethyne, C2H4, which is ethylene, or ethene, and then C2H6, which is ethane, so ane single bond, E double bond, ion triple bond. These three will lead you through different hybridizations and how atoms with different hybridizations interact with each other to form molecules. And then if you wanted to have a heteroatom, something that's, that's not carbons and hydrogens, the examples I would typically do are going to be CH3OH, right, throw an oxygen in there, CH2O, which we just did, so we can do methanol, formaldehyde, and then HCN is a great one if you want to see some uh, triple bonds and see some SP hybridization. So the hydrogen cyanide molecule is another one. So this would be good practice to try to draw Lewis-Stott structures for each of these molecules. Then to look at VSEPR to see what the electron domain geometry and shape is about the central atom. And then bust out with the right hybridizations what the orbitals look like and how things connect up to form sigma and pi bonds. And if you'd uh, like me to show any of these examples, go ahead and say so in the comments. Um, I'm going to turn into a full-fledged YouTuber and say, subscribe and like and leave a comment and um, then we can make these videos a little more useful.